Yo, welcome back to another episode of the Broncos Avenue Podcast. It's your host, Amir, today with my co-host, Jordan, today. And a very special guest, we have Justin Sternod here from the Denver Broncos Inside Linebacker. Super excited to have you on today on the podcast to talk about all things Broncos offseason related and your career here so far with the Broncos. Um, obviously, you've been playing, you know, here, you've been here a part of the Denver Broncos organization for three years now. Um, you're a 2020 fifth round pick. Uh, three years in the NFL, like I mentioned, played 33 games the last two seasons uh, with the Broncos. Um, super excited to have you on today's pod, man. How, how are you doing? Yeah, man, I'm doing good. I appreciate you guys having me on. Uh, I've I've been following you guys for a couple of years now, and uh, uh, when you hit me up about the opportunity, I I was excited. For sure, man. It's great, great pleasure to have you on today. Um, you know, definitely we've been having a lot of defensive players on, you know, recently getting, a, you know, a lot more intel and, you know, kind of how last season went with Averro um, and, you know, what's your kind of thoughts on Vance Josephar and all that. Uh, but first, I want to ask you, I've been, this has been a question that's kind of been, I've been wanting to ask any Bronco that I can, you know, I keep forgetting, but I think you're the perfect guy to answer this question because you were his teammate in college. Um, dating back to uh, the game, you know, your rookie year, um, against the Saints, both you and Kendall Hinton are, you know, attended Wake Forest from 2015 to 2019. Um, so I want to ask first, what was it like getting to reunite with your college teammate in Broncos uniforms in Kendall Hinton? And can you kind of take us behind how that game with Kendall Hinton, um, you know, kind of went, you know, against the Saints, your uh, your rookie season? Yeah, so it's pretty crazy, but uh, me, Kendall, and a saying actually uh, joined the team at the same time. Yeah. Uh, same time same year and uh we've been in denver uh saying went to la for the end of the 2021 season but all three of us have been in denver now for almost three years so it's been a really cool opportunity uh that's not something that happens a lot um but i mean that that story is pretty crazy so when when kendall got the call i was actually with kendall uh he, we were in the same apartment complex awesome. and he got the call and he was like like you know, they, they like they need me to come in like they need me to play quarterback like all, all the quarterbacks uh, had the whole COVID thing going on. And um, we kind of like laughed about it at first. Like they like there's no like is that is it really happening or whatever? And I mean, it turns out it really did. It was a crazy, crazy turn of events in 24 hours. And um, I thought he handled it well. I mean, he went in there, did what he I mean, he, you're talking li literally he had like eight hours to prepare yeah. for, you know, it's crazy. Mean? So. I mean, the game obviously didn't go the way we wanted, but um, for me personally, watching it, it was pretty crazy because I, I was injured that year. I had uh, yeah. my first year in Denver. So uh, just to see him go out there and do his thing, though, and to see what he's done since then is pretty crazy. I mean, he's had a great career so far. He really helped us this year a lot. I thought he stepped up big time this year, mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do the rest of his career. Man, that's that's crazy. Um, yeah, I want to ask you if you could, you know, could you tell us about, you know, your whole draft pop process and what was going through your mind, you know, when you got that phone call that, you know, you were going to be a different Bronco? Yeah, so the draft process was was a great experience. I mean, the, obviously the draft process doesn't happen for everybody. But um, for me, uh, I went to Wake Forest. Um, I redshirted my first year at Wake Forest because I played I played strong safety in high school. So. I redshirted my first year in college to kind of develop and put on the size to play linebacker. And then um, my career worked out pretty well at Wake Forest, but my senior year, I had tore my bicep uh, in the middle of the season playing against Florida State. So going into the draft, I had that I had a torn bicep, you know, and I, I did do uh, most of the stuff at the combine, but uh, I was like two months off, like fresh off my bicep tear. And um, I just, did the process and then COVID happened. So all, all pro days and everything were shut down. Yeah. Um, and then after that, really, we just had to wait for the draft. I mean, we had, we were working out from like our home garages. I was working out with my best friend every day in the garage. We had to build like a, an in-home garage or um, an in-home gym in the garage. And uh, just went from there. And then draft night, uh, Got the call from Mr. Elway, and uh, at the time it was Vic Fangio was our coach, and um, mm -hmm. just talked to them. It was obviously one of the greatest days of my life. Um, I I grew up like a big sports guy, like I'm I'm really into sports, so yeah. just to have that like opportunity that I grew up, you know, watching those guys get the call and things like that for that to happen was obviously a once in a lifetime thing. But uh, just to spend that day with like my close friends and family, um, and just enjoy the moment was really cool. And then, obviously, I've been blessed to have these three years in Denver, which 
is awesome. The the fan base is great. Uh, the, we haven't been able to win like we want to, obviously, these last three years. But I really, really hope we can turn that around this year. And I, I really think we have the players and coaches to do so. So I'm excited. Yeah, speaking of coaches that can help turn around, you know, the kind of the trend, you know, the way the franchise has been performing, you know, we got, you know, Sean Payton, obviously, the new head coach hired here in Denver, um, you know, really excited for that hire. I'm sure you guys are. Um, speaking of Sean Payton, I want to kind of tie this back to my first question. I'm um, a little bit about that, uh, the game, you know, the Kendall Henson game at quarterback. Um, has that meant something that you and uh, Kendall have possibly, you know, joked around a little bit with uh, Sean? Because, you know, he knows that would have been a much, uh, you know, different game if, you know, all that circum- all the circumstances didn't, uh, you know, shape up to that way. <laughs> no, me and Kendall actually haven't had the chance to talk about that yet, but I'm sure that'll be some locker room talk when we get back. Uh, yeah. That'd yeah. be funny. Yeah, speaking about the new coaching staff, you know, um, have you got to meet any of the new coaches, you know, like the new linebacker coaches and uh, anything like that? And what's your, you know, thoughts on like just the whole new coaching staff, Sean Payton and everybody? Yeah, I mean, uh, so I've talked to my linebacker coach, Coach Minuski, who uh, he came from Minnesota, as well as uh, the special teams coach, um, Coach Kotwaka, um, both yeah. from Minnesota, which just a coincidence. But yeah, I talked to both of them. Um, Sound like good dudes and guys that really want to win, help us change what's what's obviously we haven't been able to win the way we want to the last couple of years. So they they seem like a motivated group. And I'm just looking forward to getting in there and working with them. Um, obviously, Coach Payton's a, a proven, you know, a, a great coach in, in his time in New Orleans and just what he was able to do there. I feel like the Saints were a every year team, you know what I mean? Every year they were competing for a Super Bowl every year. So. That's what that's what we need to get to. We're year in, year out. We're competing for the Super Bowl. And um, I'm just I'm really excited to get back for OTAs and get to work with them. Yeah. So going back a little bit to your, uh, you know, your rookie season, I know you mentioned that uh, wrist injury that ended your 2020 season, um, you know, unfortunate way for you because, you know, you, you talked about your torn bicep your senior year in college and you're one of the more standout coverage linebackers, you know, in the draft. I remember and, you know, you kind of fell a little bit to the fifth round because of that injury. Um, and, you know, obviously that, you know, rookie season, unfortunate for you to, you know, suffer injury like that. Can you kind of take us behind, you know, just that whole day? I was looking a little bit into it last night and apparently you had to have like a, an immediate surgery, you know, hours later, which is, it's it's crazy. Um, what, what exactly happened that day? What was your immediate and what was your immediate thought process following that surgery that took place hours later? Yeah. So I, I think it was about maybe a week and a half, two weeks into my first ever camp. And that was the year where we came right off COVID. So like we Mm -hmm. showed up for camp, there was no OTAs, no, none of that. It was just like show the rookies showed up and uh, we were right in the camp and we were doing like, uh, I think we were just scrimmaging or some type of maybe, I think just scrimmaging or some team period. And me and Andrew Beck uh, met each other like in the A or B gap or something like that. And, um, when I just, when the collision first started, I had my hands obviously to, to take on the contact and then to shut off. Mm-hmm. And my wrist must've just been like the, the, and the perfect point of like the middle of that collision. And so mm-hmm. my, I dislocated a bone that tore all the ligaments in my wrist. Yeah. And so at the time, like at first I go back into the huddle on the, uh, after the play and I, I look at, I don't know if you guys remember uh, Josh Watson, the linebacker at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I look at him and I'm like, yo, I, I think I might have broke my wrist. I'm not, I'm not sure, but like I, so he was like, all right, we, we got to call more plays. We got to grind through it. So uh, oh I my go gosh. another play, play the play, but like I, my, my hand was like down by my side the whole time. I didn't, I didn't really want to do anything with it. And then I go off to the sideline to take like a drink in between the reps. And um, I had my wrist taped, so the trainer couldn't really see my wrist, but he like takes a look at it. He feels it for a second. And at the time you got so much adrenaline that like, you don't feel you it. Really, you don't really know what's going on. So he's like, uh, I think it's all right or whatever. So I like go out during seven on seven. I do like another period or whatever. And I'm like, no, something, something's wrong. So I, I go, I'm, I'm getting a drink. And when I grab the water bottle, my wrist like clicks out of place. Like it like clicks out of place. Like it, it, I was like, all right, this is, so they, they take me inside, um, run x-rays and stuff and they see that it's like dislocated. So then like I had to put my, my hand in like a, you know, a Chinese finger trap that is like yeah yeah and one of those with like people pulling on my, to try and get the bone back in because if oh. i could have got the bone back in i at least 
probably wouldn't have had that. I definitely wouldn't have uh, had to have immediate surgery, but the pressure, uh, it was, it like was um, doing something to one of the nerves or whatever to where I would have, I could have potentially lost, you know what I mean? Lost uh, my hand if they didn't go in and do the surgery. So obviously needed to do immediate surgery, but that ended up happening. I, at the time I was like, Oh, wrist injury. Maybe I'll be back in a month or something. And they're like, no, this is, they're like, this is a season. I was like, Jesus, can't, I couldn't catch a break at the time. Yeah. Wow, that's, 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 I'm not gonna lie, that's crazy. It's even crazy that you went, you know, you went out there and played some more plays after like breaking it. That's crazy. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't know, I didn't know at the time, like how bad <laughs> it was. I was just like, yeah, this, this is pretty, it hurt. But I was like, <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Play. Yeah. Um, yeah. so, you know, you've been in Denver for a while, you know, I just kind of uh, want to ask you, can you tell us about like, you know, all the DCs and, you know, the, the, you know, your relationship with coach E and all the past DCs that you, you know, worked with? Yeah. So, uh, my first year obviously was the injury, but we had coach Donatel who was with, uh, coach Fangio and, uh, coach Donatel was a great coach. Um, he's, uh, I actually played with his son in college. His son was a senior, uh, at Wake Forest when I was a freshman. Um, so I had a little familiar uh, familiarity there, and he was a good dude. You know, really helped teach everybody in the room. You know, kind of just the philosophy of that defense, how they wanted things played, uh, and so on and so forth. And but really, obviously, Coach Fangio was like the he kind of was the coordinator. You know what I mean? He called the I think yeah. he called the defense, obviously. And so my first year playing, it was really like it was really cool to learn from a guy just with with my coach, Coach Reggie Hearing. Uh, as my linebacker coach, who was in the league for a long time, he was with the Broncos when they won the Super Bowl in uh, 2015. Um, just his kind of philosophy on the on the way he liked the linebacker play played, and then just Coach Fangio's philosophy on how he wanted things played. Like Coach Fangio plays things a lot differently, I would say, than some other people. Like he's a very match coverage oriented guy. You know what I mean? He wants to keep things in front of them and things like that um, with certain defenses. So it was, it was a great experience. My first uh, year playing uh, that defense is a lot to, a lot to learn and a lot to execute uh, playing and play out. Um, and then this year with coach E, uh, this was a great year with coach E. Um, since he, he joined uh, and coach Hanson, my, my new line, my coach, it was, it was really good. Like we had, I felt like we had such a strong room this year, you know, with Josie, Alex, Jonas, um, there were, and then we had some others that obviously we like went through a couple during the season when people got injured, but I mean, it's just coach G the way he was able to like get everybody to play hard for him. You know what I mean? Like it's like every, I feel like every defensive coordinator, they, like they know football inside and out, but coach G was like really good at getting guys to like buy in and want to, you know, give them that hundred percent effort day in and day out. And, um, that's something that I think we're going to miss. Obviously I, I think, uh, we're going to be able to do that again, though, this year with the players we have and the coaches we have. But Coach E was a great, great coach. Uh, I think he's going to do great things in the league um, in the future. And um, I, I think Carolina definitely got a good coach in Coach E. No, definitely. For sure. Yeah, you, you mentioned uh, – I want to talk about him a little bit. Alexander Johnson, you mentioned him. I know in one of your games, um, I believe it was the game against the Pittsburgh Steelers, one of your, like, your first starts, and you got to start alongside him. Um, I've actually had a chance to talk to him a few times, and I've actually had him on the podcast as well. He's one of my first Broncos I had on here, and he's a, he's a really, really cool, genuine dude. Um, what, what was it kind of like getting to learn from him? Um, I know he's a, he's a really good uh, you know teacher on the defense. Yeah, man, AJ's a great guy. Like uh, on and off the field, AJ's a great dude. He uh, he'd have us over at his house for for meals, cookouts, and stuff. You know, just build that camaraderie and stuff. But I mean, it was great playing with him. You know, AJ's AJ's a, a different linebacker, man. He's big. He's he's a big thumper. Uh, and when I had got thrown into the starting lineup, I think that was AJ's. I want to say his third or fourth year. You know, playing. Um, so he had a, a lot of experience. But just being out there with a guy like that, it was. It was good because he was like in the times where I would get overwhelmed as like a rookie, I would say, just with everything going on, all the calls, all the, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, he, he would really like, he was really calm through all that because he had been there and done that for a couple of years. And, you know, when we lost him, obviously it was, it was tough, but um, mm -hmm. great player. He, he kind of came out to work every day with like this like dog mentality. Like he was always ready to work every day and practice and stuff. And it was good to learn from somebody like that for sure. Especially with Josie on the sideline that year. Josie's obviously a yeah. great, great teammate, great teacher, great person to learn from. And when he went down that year, it was obviously 
tough because he wasn't around as much as he would be as if he was playing. But AJ was a, a good player to learn from for sure. Yeah, AJ Johnson was such a dog. I I, I really wanted us to bring him back. Um, but speaking about all that, can you give us your welcome to the NFL moment? <laughs> welcome to the – oh, I, I would say uh, – I went into the weight room for like my first workout in Denver and, and Tom Miller was like right across, uh, across from me. And he was like, yo, 40, like, what's up? I like that number a lot. And, uh, <laughs> obviously he, it, to him, it was probably just him saying like, what's up to a rookie. But like, for me, like I, I like grew up, you know, I had, I had a Von Miller Jersey. Like I, I was like, you know what I mean? Like I, I was really a huge Von Miller fan, like growing up and stuff. So it was just crazy to be in like the same, you know, facility as him, weren't like playing with him as a teammate now is pretty crazy. Yeah, that's insane. That's yeah, pretty, crazy. that's my personally, <laughs> my favorite player of all time. You know, that, that's one of the guys that, you know, made us Broncos fans. So, yeah, um, that's, yeah, that's awesome. All of, Hall of Famer for sure. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, so one thing, I, whenever I have, you know, players on this podcast, I kind of, and you know, this is kind of what stands out from other podcasts. I feel like is we don't really necessarily always ask, you know, like the X's and O stuff. We want to like get to know like the person, you know, we yeah. want to get to know Justin. Like, I feel like that's what people kind of value and appreciate on this podcast. And I think Justin, you know, the person is more important, more important than Justin, the football, yeah, the player. football player. So I want to, I want to kind of get to know, you know, the kind of person that you are. Um, what what kind of made you uh, you know uh, you know choose football on a personal level growing up, and who also inspired you growing up? Yeah, man. Uh, I'd say my dad. Uh, my dad um, for sure uh, pushed me in, in in a good way. You know what I mean? Growing up to be not really to be. To, I mean to be whatever I wanted, but like he really held me accountable when I told him like you know like I I want to play either. I played baseball and football growing up, and I, I took them both very seriously. But um, my freshman year of high school, I, I actually blew my arm out uh, baseball. I, I was pitching a lot and things like that. So I had arm surgery going into high school and like kind of baseball kind of didn't work out. So uh, obviously went the football route and it happened to work out. But my dad really like pushed me. He, he would make me lift weights when I was like a fret, you know what I mean? When I, when I was like, didn't want to and things like that. And yeah. it just really helped me accountable. And then he's been there for me. I mean, he helped me with all of my big decisions, like, college and you know picking an agent and things like that um and yeah he's just someone i learned from a lot uh obviously my family is just like that's like kind of, i know everybody says like their family is like like why they do things which is, is that's true but like I'm, I'm really close with my family uh i really enjoy like part of, my favorite part of football season is like my family gets to come to the games you know what i mean my friends and yeah. family yeah, that's it's kind of rare nowadays because I mean I've, everybody's busy with work and all that stuff. But to get everybody together for weekends and things like that uh, is what means a lot to me. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Um, you know, kind of staying around this topic, you know, what were some you know football players like? You know, like you said, you were a big Von Miller fan. Like, what were some guys that you kind of you know look up to and wanted to role model your game after? Oh man, I I grew up watching once, but um, growing up. As part of like you know, I grew up as like a, a Bucks and Bears fan because I was born in Illinois <laughs> and I had moved down to Florida. But That's Derek awesome. Brooks, uh, Brian Urlacher, Lance Briggs, those are guys that like, I, I grew up watching a lot. Um, Urlacher was like obviously like a legend in Chicago. I mean, had a great yeah. career. Um, I know I'd really like to go back and watch Urlacher's film like now, being older and like playing in the league. I'd like to see how he looked like. And compare it to just the linebackers of today. But I mean, even linebackers like Fred Warner today, I really, really like his game. You know what I mean? Um, even uh, Dre Greenlaw, who's there in San Fran, too. They got two great linebackers there and they both play really well. So that, those are people that I watch and like to watch their film as well. Yeah, that's all. I, the Brian Urlacher days are the days, man. I was I was watching him before I was a Broncos fan. That was definitely one of the dogs on defense for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I want to kind of, you know, you talked a little bit about this uh, early on, actually, you talked about how, you know, you really liked and you were invested into sports um, before you're even, you know, a part of, you know, the or drafting in the NFL. Um, I read a little bit yesterday that you want to either cover sports or work in the front office uh, of an NFL organization when your NFL career is over. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and where that kind of that passion stems from? Yeah, uh, like I said, I just I grew up like really being like 
sports junkie, like I, not just football, like baseball, basketball, all of it, yeah. uh, and fighting, like mixed martial arts and boxing. I'm like really, oh, really. Yeah. Good. Um, so it's definitely something I want to do. I obviously I haven't decided yet because I'm I'm playing and all that. But yeah. when the time comes, I'll I'll make that decision. But um, yeah, I don't know. I I just I really like I love sports. Like I can talk sports. I can it never never bores me and like. I don't want to, I don't want to do, you know what I mean? I'd rather do a job that I like enjoy and like yes. love to do it every day. For so, sure. Yeah. I mean, I definitely would like to do the front office route, you know, become a GM of a team and make those like big decisions. <laughs> I, I really would for that. Um, and I think, I think that is what I, what I want to do, but I also have like a lot of friends and connections in the coaching industry from college and, um, some of my college coaches and NFL coaches that have went other places, obviously, and extended their careers and grew their careers. So, but then also you see these people on TV, you know what I mean? It, it looks like a great job. Like yeah. go on, go on TV and talk football for a couple hours. is the bag there. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Man, that's, that's, that's the dream. All you, you talk about connections as well. Connections are a big thing in the industry nowadays. And uh, I want to, I, you know, before Jordan asks his next question, I want to ask you a little bit. I, you talked a little bit about uh, combat sports as well. And I seen it from your uh, story a little bit. Um, we post a little bit about uh, Conor McGregor. What, what, what do you think about him and how big of a fan you are? <laughs> a huge Conor fan. Um, I've been following Conor since before he beat Aldo for the title, you know, playing. Diego Brandao in Ireland and, and Dennis Ever in Boston and all that. But um yeah. yeah, I mean it's just so cool to see somebody go from like you can say whatever you want about him. Like, yeah, he's he's made some bad he's made some bad decisions and things like that. But just to see somebody go from almost nothing to I'm talking like the pinnacle of the sport and he really oh, yeah. he really changed the sport forever. Mm -hmm. The way the way I mean everything, the pay per view sales fighter pay like people still complain about fighter pay obviously but like <laughs> connor's connor's definitely helping that like he's yeah he is creating more money for the sport i mean the back end of his career obviously hasn't hasn't been what people would expect it to be but i mean it's it's tough when you become that level of you know what i mean fame and notoriety and you do all the things he's done i mean it's, it's probably tough for him to like have the competitive drive that he once had with all the success and all the you know what i mean financial freedom he has now but i'm excited for his return i'm hoping he him and chandler be a big fight i hope I'm, i oh, hope yeah but I, I think it'll be a tough i think it'll be a good fight for sure yeah I, i'm gonna get to it to uh, ufc in just a second um i want to go back to what you was talking about you know um being like you say you want to cover sports and things like that yeah that's been like my dream since i was nine you know i'm just a big sports guy like i could just sit around and talk about sports like you said it doesn't bore me you know it doesn't bore you like it doesn't bore, bore me that's just been kind of my dream like i'm going to school for it plan to get two degrees in and everything like that yeah that's like my dream job so it's really cool that you know that um you want to do something like that too yeah man for sure dude it's, it, 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 it's what you love that's what you got to do yeah wait man i i i like i can't wait for you know i i love playing ball and i want to play ball as long as i can and I, I'm really looking forward to that opportunity of that, like, new challenge of whether, whether it's the front office or a different gig, you know what I mean? Just yeah. I, I want to work my way to the top of that as well. So, yeah. And, I mean, how cool would it be to, like, you know what I mean, be a team of a team, you know, make this <laughs> trade, yeah. you know what I mean, trades, all that stuff. It's really cool, man. George George Payton's got to – he's got to be living life. <laughs> Yeah, for yeah. Real. It, it, it was just one point you brought up about, you know, like you want to go to work and be happy. And that's something that, you know, my dad kind of instilled to me when I was young. Like he made the same decision. You know, he quit his uh, nine to five job and start pursuing a career that he wanted to because he wanted to be happy. And uh, we kind of talked about this on the last podcast, you know, like um, yeah. just, you know, you want to wake up and just be happy. You don't want to be one of those guys like, man, I, I ain't trying to go into work. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't I can't. I can't. I don't want to go to work on Monday. Like I, I, I want to be one of those guys that's like, I can't wait for work. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't wait to go on there and do what you want to do. So, yeah. Then it's not work. Then it's just. It's, yeah. Then it's. You know what I mean. You know what I'm saying like, yeah. but yeah. Speaking about UFC, what's your opinion? Or like, what's your opinion on uh, John Jones? Oh, dude. I so I like I said, I've been following the sport since I was little, and I mean, since I was just my so I I was just watching the fights with my dad and a sister the other night and i i was like i was like it's crazy my sister was like tiny when john jones became champion at 23 years old i was like dad isn't that crazy that he 
and he just for him to come out and do what he did Saturday night, bro. I mean, oh yeah, undoubtedly the greatest fighter of all time. I mean, if he would have got, I I told everybody if he would have got knocked out Saturday night, he still would have been the greatest fighter of all time. But to do what he did Saturday night, I mean, yeah, like yeah, it's crazy. I, cause... I don't know if anyone's gonna be able to ever surpass that career. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, cause he cause he was away for like sixteen months and then just came back. First fight, knocked him out, and I was like, "Bro, that's crazy." Like, yeah, and went up a weight class. <laughs> he did. Yeah. yeah, he went up a weight. It's crazy. Yeah, it's goat stuff right there. Um, so I want to talk a little bit. You talk about relationships, connections, and stuff. Um, Jesse Bates, uh, starting safety for the Cincinnati Bengals. I saw that you guys have a a pretty uh, close bond and friendship dating back to your college days. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that and kind of the bond the bond that you guys have de um developed? You know, here at the NFL level. Yeah, man. Jesse Jesse was a college roommate of mine. Uh, our redshirt freshman year at uh, Wake. Um, started off with him being in the um. We, we always had dorms like right next to each other, uh, me and Jesse. And uh, I feel like we're very similar people. And just I don't know whether it was how we were raised or whatever, but me and him are pretty similar, pretty laid back, like chill guys. You know what I mean? And he was just coming in our freshman year. We both had red shirted and um, I, I'd practice. We'd be practicing and doing all the weightlifting and stuff together. And you, I mean, when you do stuff like that, I feel like you grow so close with people. And um, just the three years that we were at Wake together was awesome. Um, he obviously had a great career. He got was able to leave early, and it's been so cool to see him do what he's done in the league. You know what I mean? He's, I knew, I knew uh, that he was going to be a great player. Like since Wake days, like I, I, I remember telling my brother one day after practice, I'm like, "Yo, dude, I'm like Jesse's going to be like really good, bro." Like I'm telling you, <laughs> and it happened to work out. I mean, he's he's had a great career so far. I'm so so happy for him, and you know. The future, I mean, free agency is about to start here, I think, in a week or something like that. And um, I, I, I expect him to obviously sign a great contract for him, his family. Mm -hmm. It's really awesome to see stuff like that, man. So I, I wish him all the best. I talk to him. We talk all the time, but obviously he's in Cincinnati or whatever it is, and I'm in Denver. So we don't get to see each other too much. But uh, he comes down to Florida often, and um, I'm looking forward to see him soon this off season at some point. But uh, wish him nothing but the best, man. He's had a great career so far, and he's he's going to continue to have an awesome career. Yeah, so this next segment, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, uh, we had, okay, so we had PJ Locke on the pod um, like a week ago. And speaking of, you know, talking about Jesse Bates, Bates being a great safety, I was the only one to in, include him in my top five list, and PJ did not include him in the top five list. <laughs> and uh, since we're on the topic of uh, PJ, um, we were actually Jordan asked him a question about Madden or something like playing, you know, Madden with the guys. Yeah. And he's talking about like how you guys had like an online franchise and stuff. And yeah. he's throwing some he's throwing some shade at you, man. He's talking about how you use like cheese plays and you're like you play unfair or something like that. I want to I want to actually roll that clip right now and uh, get your reaction to that. Um, and he wants he wants you to see this clip. He thinks you're going to get mad by it. Let, let's roll it. Let's roll like it. An online franchise. You had an online okay. franchise, and uh, we had a we had a good amount in there. Um, I feel like the best guys were Lloyd, Cushionberry, really, uh, <laughs> That's good. yeah, um, and Josh Johnson. Mm. Oh wow! And, and, oh yeah, and Justin Justin Chenard could play. Ooh. So. Um, that that's the three guys. That's the three guys I'm gonna take because they was in that they was in that league with me, you know. And I got beat by every last one of them, so I wouldn't. <laughs> but I can I can play though. I can play. Don't get don't get me wrong. I can I can go I can go. But you know they they you know they they know all the different little cheesy plays and stuff like that. So yeah, if they watching this, yeah, I said it. Cheese plays. So no nobody want to play fair. Play the regular stuff. They want to go you know go TikTok some cheese plays and and use them. So. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have uh, Justin Sternod on here soon. I'll, I'll be sure to send him this clip. Oh, please, Teddy Bear. <laughs> he's gonna get so mad. He's gonna get so mad. <laughs> All right, oh, he can go. Great. He can go a little bit. He can go a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So he he was definitely letting you know. What what, what do you got to respond to him on that? All right. So this is how it went down, man. So uh, Kush, it was Kush and PJ. Like we were in the locker room. I think. I don't know if it was, yeah, probably during the, right when the season had started or whatever, they're like, hey, let's start a Madden League, like, you know, with people in the locker room, like, whatever. We're like, all right, cool. And, you know, I was talking a big game. I was like, you know, 
the, the year before, I didn't really play Madden too much. But I was like, the year before that, back in like 2018 or something, I was like, I was I was one of the better Madden players, I think. And so we start the league, and I, I forget what team I had. Oh, I had the Packers, and the Packers are like one of the better teams in Madden. And, of course, PJ had the Bills, who are like the biggest team in Madden. Yes, yes. So he, I played PJ in like my first game. And I'm running like three tight end set, like heavy personnel. Like I'm, I'm like, cause he's he's running some three down front, and he's like stuffing the run. Like I'm like, come on, bro, this is it's not realistic. <laughs> but I get into like a heavy, heavy jumbo set. I'm like trying to run the ball, still can't run the ball. So PJ like blows me out, right? And I come in the locker room the next day. I'm like, bro, I'm like, you're gonna tell me that you're not running some cheese stuff? Like you just you're just <laughs> me down, like all all these all these weird chips and stuff. So. I had to do my due diligence, you know what I mean? I, <laughs> I put in the work, you know what I mean? I, I'm, I might have saw a few TikToks here and there, but you know what I mean? I put in the work, and uh, I ended up winning the Super Bowl in that league, and, and I was talking so much oh, wow. smack. I was, I was talking so much smack to uh, TJ and all them, and he was – we had it started – after the year, we, we – we're gonna start a new one, and, and um, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take the Bills, and PJ didn't like that because <laughs> the Super Bowl, the champion got a uh, got first pick of the teams, and I was like, I'm gonna take the Bills. PJ was like, oh, no. Nah. So that was, it was a good time. Hopefully, we can do that again this year. Yeah, that's crazy. That's that's hilarious. You guys play Madden? Any you guys play Madden? Man, oh yeah, I'm, a, play, yeah, I'm on uh, mutt. Yeah, yeah, I'm a big Madden guy. Like, um, I, I join a lot of the the same thing, the 32 man franchise leagues. I do a lot of those. Like, in here at uh, I go to University of Houston. Um, most recently, like, I do a lot of Madden tournaments here. I think yeah. last last year, um, I hosted a big Madden tournament here. It was like 20 people came. They yeah. came to uh, my the dorm and everything like that, and I won. No, I can't. I, I I I can't remember how much I won. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. It took the whole day though. It was like 20 people that yeah. competed. It took like the whole day, but it was worth it. I won. I think <laughs> I was using, I was using Green Bay. I was using Green Bay too. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. I, yeah. Aaron Rodgers is crazy on man. I'm not gonna lie. He's crazy. Oh, we gotta, you guys gotta. Uh, we gotta play sometime, man. Nah, gotta, for sure. Yeah, we gotta play. I'm yeah. a, I'm in a I'm in a league right now with like 32 users. I don't really know. <laughs> I know a couple people in the league, but like mm. other than that, it's like through like a group me or something yeah. like that, you know what i mean yeah but yeah, yeah we no. gotta we gotta hop on the six sometime yeah for, for sure. sure yeah for yeah. sure see see who's see who's really you know nice <laughs> and whatnot yeah we oh, can let's, let's get it for let's sure. get it yeah see, the, hey the way he's smiling is, and laughing i bet he, he's a, he's on some youtube stuff like <laughs> so. i already know i'm gonna, I'm gonna come out my formation there's gonna be i'm, there's gonna I'm be not gonna even lie all this so <laughs> We're gonna be posting all the clips and stuff. Oh yeah, it's gonna be fun. But yeah, I, I re I'm really only on like mutt and like I've been in I've been playing FIFA a lot more actually. FIFA is like really fun, but yeah, yeah I, I only really like play mutt and like I've I've been playing like once every like two weeks because I'm I've been so busy. But yeah, my team's at like a 93 overall right now. Um, I just got like the 95 JJ Watt, and they're they're constantly releasing like the the higher overall cards right now. So yeah, 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 yeah. I I I I used to play mud, but I stopped because it was like arcade mode. Like you know, it's not real Madden. Like, I know, bro. It, it's yeah. not real Madden. Like so, like every time I play, like if it's like like if I play with my homeboys, we'll do like an online franchise. I'm putting on all Madden competitive, and yeah. we just go crazy. Like it's because to me, it's funner that way. Like it's real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the mutt, the mutt stuff is pretty crazy. Like it's crazy. Like oh yeah, yeah, but it's cool. It's all yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm so. down for Madden, man. Madden is that's my game. It's got to be Madden and Warzone is probably like the two games that I would I would say is like my top two right now. That's the same for me. That's all I really play is just Madden and Warzone. If yeah. I'm if I'm it's one of those two for sure. Yeah. So uh, going back to, uh, you know, the Denver Broncos a little bit, um, what would you say in your first three years so far, what would you say is your favorite moment as a Bronco so far? So one that just stands out in your mind from the rest. Mm, I would say, I think, I think uh, our win in Jacksonville, um, my, my first year of playing, not my first year, but my second year, um, because we it was like a big road win and we were like I think we were either three or three and or four and oh after that game so we had a lot of momentum going and just things were going really good um mm -hmm. that was but that was like a, the first game where I had got thrown into the fire because Josie had went down and uh we we took down the Jaguars and just had a lot of momentum going that was that was a really good time um honestly even this year when we 
when we got that win in London against Jacksonville, you know what I mean? I felt like that was the time in the season where like it was it wasn't a winner like make or break, but it kind of was a make or break game. You know what I mean? Like we needed to get that one and. We started out down like weren't we down fourteen zero I think to Jacksonville or ten zero something like that ten zero yeah ten zero yeah and we just battled back and I mean all the, when you win in the league it's just there's nothing like it the locker room is great everything's good um, so yeah I mean those are two moments I would say I definitely enjoyed the most yeah um, I, I want to ask you know what's kind of you know your relationship with Russell Wilson because you know he gets a lot of hate in the media and everything like that you know I just want to know what's your, like your opinion on that whole situation and what's your relationship like with Russ? Yeah, I mean Russell's a great dude, uh, he, he great leader, great dude. Um, he has been since he stepped into the building. Uh, he does take a lot of heat. Uh, it's funny you guys say that. I like in my group chat with some of my friends, like people, someone put something in there, just like man, this dude he can't catch a break. Like he's always taking heat from from someone and. I think that just comes with obviously the the fame and all that stuff, but mm-hmm. he's been a great leader uh, and a great you know competitor since he's came uh, came into the locker room. Um, I mean, obviously last year it wasn't what anybody expected. I mean, obviously we didn't perform as a team, and I don't think Russell performed to where you know what he wanted to do. Um, but for the people that say like he's a terrible leader or he's not you know what I mean I I don't agree with that I mean obviously he's a busy dude and he's got a lot going on um so obviously I think at times he might not you know be maybe around as much as some of the other guys but he's you know I, I think he's somebody that's gonna work his tail off and continue to grow and um I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what he does this year I didn't know a lot of people are kind of writing him off and acting like He's on the decline, but I think he's I think he's definitely in store for a big year if him and uh, Coach Payton can put it together, and I think they will. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, this is perfectly positioned for one of the greatest, like, you know, athlete, sports athlete comebacks of all time. So um, everybody's talking about how, you know, he can't win a comeback player of the year. He's just he's totally done. We've never seen this before from any you know any any NFL uh, athlete to have this bad of a year and then come back and then you know get back to stardom, especially at the quarterback position, one of the harder positions to play. So um, I think it's, it's going to be one hell of a story. I'm really excited and I'm glad that you brought that up because I would rather you know hear the opinion from someone who's actually been in the locker room with him rather than these guys who uh, claim to know they see everything. Yes. Um. So it's it's really good to see this. Uh, the side of the story for our Russ. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's the that's the bad part about media. Like, yeah, there's some guys I feel like that uh, that cover the team that obviously I'm sure they get some like inside information or something from yeah. whatever sources they have. But for the most part, like people talking outside of the room, you know, the building is like it's all speculation. You know, what I mean, they don't really know what's going on or why something's happening or this and like. They they assume a lot of things, but you know what I mean. I don't. I wouldn't say they know everything that's going on and and why things are going on. You know what I mean. So, I, I'm really excited for the season. I think, like you said, I think it's, I think it's. We definitely have the chance to turn this thing around quicker rather than late. You know what I mean. Like I think, mm-hmm. talk about like rebuilding and all that stuff. We're nowhere near like a, a rebuild team. Like I think we're like we're ready to go this year. You know what I mean. I, yeah. I like Super Bowl. Like that's that, that's what we got to be talking this year for sure. Yeah, I and mean, we haven't even gone in free agency yet. And I feel like if this was the roster day one of week one next year, I think we're gonna compete pretty damn, pretty damn good for a winning record. Yeah. And, you know, the playoffs as well. That's pretty crazy to say. We haven't even drafted yet either. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I agree. So uh, my next question for you, and it's kind of more, uh, more so you, the football player. Uh, what, what's the kind of a part of your game that makes you feel like it sticks out from other linebackers uh, at the end at the NFL uh, level? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, my coverage ability, along with like my sideline to side uh, movement skills, um, just my ability to be around the ball a lot. You know what I mean? I think is something that uh, stands out for me. Um, it, it's always been a part of my game and something I focus on. You know what I mean? Being around the ball, being productive when you're out there, and things like that. And I think as you like, for me, I I played I played a decent amount. You know what I mean? I played those six games, I think, or seven games I started um, at linebacker in my second year. And then I uh, played a lot of special team snaps, just getting that experience in the league. That's really important. I feel like um, playing against, you know, some people that you, you play against some people twice a year. And it, it's crazy how much different a game can look 
whether it be defensively or special teams wise, just from knowing your opponent, you know what I mean, and, and playing them. And I think the more experience you get in the league is just is so important. And I think that's something that I've taken each and every year and continue to grow with. For sure. Yeah. Um, I asked PJ Locke this question when uh when he came on, and I thought it was pretty funny. He gave me a pretty funny answer. Um, which player on the team, you know, would you love to, you know, like go out and party with or go out to like your club with and hang out with? And which player would you like never do that with? Like which player would you never go out with? Uh go out and have a good time with. I mean, Alex Singleton. Uh he's I I, I got pretty close with him this year, and he's a he's a good time, you know, outside of the locker room. He's someone that it's cool to hang out with and things like that. Have always have a good time with him. Uh somebody that I wouldn't go out with. Um let me think. Hmm. I mean, I go out with any of my teammates, so I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say. Oh, he's <laughs> oh, okay. I'm not gonna say, but I, I'm trying to think of like. I'm trying to think. Because uh, PJ, uh, PJ said Garrett Bowles. Yeah, I would. I would. Bowles was already coming up in my mind when you started asking about teammates. <laughs> Bowles, you know, Bowles is a funny dude, man. Funny dude. Um. I don't know though. I think I think I go out with all my teammates. They're all cool. I mean, all, everyone's got different stuff going on outside of the the locker room. Everyone's got some guys got families and kids. You know what I mean. Some guys don't. So yeah. it's all relative. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He 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 let us know he definitely would not go out on any night without <laughs> Garrett Bulls because that man, the way he be acting, Bulls you never know. Bulls is a funny dude. <laughs> yeah. You, and. Talking, uh, you talked a little bit about Alex Singleton. Um, we're kind of wondering, you know, the free agency is coming up in a week or so. Um, yeah. Do you know anything about Alex? That, you know, potentially him come back. We would love to have him back here. He had in probably the best year of his entire NFL career. Yeah, Alex had a great year. Uh, was really productive. Um, he was an awesome person to learn from too. Like I, I got really close with Alex this year, uh, and not just with like football, but with like nutrition and things like that. You know what I mean? Taking care mm-hmm. of your body. He's obviously. A little older than I am, so uh, he's had a little bit more experience in the league, and it it, it was good to learn from him. Um, but yeah, I mean, I talk to him. I talk to Alex almost every day, every other day or so. Um, he's doing good. Uh, he's doing things in the off season right now. But um, yeah, I think I think free agency should go good for him. But the year he had last year, you know what I mean. I don't see why either the Broncos or other teams won't won't have uh, interest in him. So I'm I'm happy for him. Like I said with Jesse, like uh, it's always cool to see these people like sign contracts, you know what I mean? That can help them and their families for a long time. So really, I'm, I'm really excited for free agency. Like I told you guys, I'm like, I'm I'm really into that stuff. So I'm looking forward to seeing who signs where, who get, you know, what teams cut people like that. Yeah, uh, two things. One, um, it just came out, Amir. I don't know if you saw it, but our, the Chiefs have decided to not franchise tag Orlando Brown, and he's going to hit the open market. I had a feeling, man. Uh, I had a feeling we would get shocked by that. That's – But, yeah. Uh, the Vikings, they they cut Eric Kendricks today. Right? Yeah. 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 yeah Eric crazy. Kendricks got cut and, today, too. And your your uh, your linebacker coach coached him last year, so yeah. this would be interesting. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah, Robbie Anderson I, I, got I'm cut, seeing, too. Ooh. Yeah, I'm seeing from uh, I'm seeing from like a lot of sources right now that they're hearing that this is probably going to be one of the craziest off seasons we've ever seen. Like uh, some I've, big names are going to get moved. Draft, there's going to be a lot of draft trades even before the draft, a lot of picks, and it, I'm really interested to see how this is going to go down. I just got to yeah, buckle up. DeAndre Hopkins, I think it will get traded for sure. Mm-hmm. I think I think a lot of people could be moving. It's pretty crazy, yeah. crazy, yeah. crazy sport, crazy business. Yeah, yeah, crazy. Business. Exactly. It's it's becoming more and more likely than more uh, like the NBA and yeah. almost even more crazier. Yeah, yeah. I feel like to get. I agree with y'all. This this race is going to be crazy because you know everybody's prices is rising and all these stu- all this stuff is coming out. Like they're saying, Aaron Rodgers possibly to the Jets is looking more and more likely, especially because Derek Carr. Because they just said yesterday that Derek Carr was waiting on the Jets, and then like all of a sudden he just goes to the Saints. So it kind of makes you wonder like what's going on with the Jets situation. So yeah. yeah. I got. I'm getting the feeling that Rodgers is done in uh, Green Bay. That's that's the like feeling that I get just from yeah. like you guys all the social media. It seems as if it's kind of like headed towards that way, but who knows? You never know what's gonna happen. Yeah. The um, yeah. 
Yeah, the second thing I, I was going to ask you was, um, you know, what's your thoughts on Vance Joseph? And, you know, we, what kind of defense are you expecting him, you know, to kind of come into Denver and run? Yeah, so I, I think I'm pretty sure because I talked to Josie and Josie played for Vance Joseph when yeah. uh, he was head coach. And he said it's actually pretty similar to what we have been running. Um, I think Josie said that there was a little bit more like man stuff, back, at least back when he was the head coach in Denver. Um just a little bit more man stuff than I'd say maybe we played the previous years, but who knows what it looks like now. He's obviously been in Arizona for a little while. And um, I thought he got, he had Arizona's defense playing pretty decent. You know what I mean? Like he had them flying around making plays. So really looking forward to uh, working with him and just seeing what we can do with this defense, really grow off last yeah. year, great year that we had as a defense. Last yeah. Year. Yeah, I would expect him, you know, knowing – I'm assuming he's going to be watching all your guys' tape and kind of get a feel for the new players on that defense. Um, do you do you kind of expect yourself to be, like, not necessarily isolated in one-on-one -on -one matchups, but be more of, of, like, a coverage help, uh, you know, with tight ends and stuff like that? Yeah, man, I'm I'm really looking forward to anything. Like, I really just grow – like, work the most on everything, trying to de develop my entire game since I've been in Denver, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, the coverage stuff is great and all that, but really just working on everything so that when my time comes, yeah. and obviously this year is crazy. I think we were maybe the only team that, like, the starting linebacker, like, Jonas went down, but Alex, you know, Alex and Josie basically played the whole year, and they they didn't get they didn't get injured at all. So just to be ready when my when my number's called and, and be productive when I get out there is really something that uh, I'm striving for, and I, I can't wait for this new staff and to get to work and just earn my spot, earn my opportunity, and really just looking forward to compete. Mm -hmm. um, you know, right now, currently in the league, you know, you, you, you talked about Fred Warner and Dre Greenlaw and all these other linebackers. You know, what would you say is your top five linebackers in the NFL right now? Oof. All right. So one, I'm going Fred Warner. Mm -hmm. Two, I would go. Um, I, I I still have Levante David. I would say Levante David still probably top four. Let me hold on. Let me let me think. I, I in no order besides Fred Warner. One, I'm gonna say in no order. Levante David. Um, Roquan. Mm -hmm. Who else? Uh, honestly, uh, Greenlaw from San Fran as well. I would, I would have up yeah. one of the one mm -hmm. of the best. Um, who else am I forgetting? Got um uh, guys like Demario. Demario. Yeah, Demario. Yeah, Demario. Um, Devondre Campbell. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think. Uh, you know, Bol Bolton from Kansas City had a great. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, he's he's up there, but I know I'm forgetting some names. I'm just trying to think of them. How do you feel about um the linebacker for the Jaguars, uh, Leo Kuhn? What's your opinion on? Oh him? yeah, there you go. That, that's one of the better ones. He had he yeah. had a great year. He's had like two years in a row where he's had great years. Um, yeah, he's led the league in tackles. I think two years in a row. Yeah, he's a really good player. He's good at like shooting gaps. Like, and I, I, I I've watched some of his tape, and he like, he really he doesn't use his hands like crazy, which not which is isn't a bad thing. Like, there's backers that use hands, backers that don't. Like, there's all different ways into how to defeat blocks, and I think it's different based off every backer. But like, he's really good at like, um, slipping blocks and getting through. You know, shooting gaps. And yeah. I've seen that over the last couple of years. That's why he got the big contract he got last off season mm -hmm. and. It looked like a good contract because he played great for the Jags this year. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I was watching a game he had against, I think it was the Titans this year. And, like, uh, I think it was, like, going into, like, the last drive of the game, he only had, like, three tackles or something like that. By the time that drive ended and, like, the game was over, he had, like, 12 tackles. Yeah. He had got, like, nine tackles in one drive. I'm like, that is absolutely insane. And against yeah. Tennessee, too, a team that's just streaked. You know, they main focus is running the football. I mean, he was yeah. shooting up all types of gaps on either side, sideline, guarding tight ends. Yeah, he's tough. Yeah, I saw something on Twitter today that was saying that Tennessee uh, might be shopping yeah. Derrick Henry. That's yeah, they're pretty shopping Derrick Henry. Yeah, yeah. this, this offseason is going to be crazy. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> yeah. All right, so my last question for you today, um, 
it's going to be kind of like a uh, you know kind of our weekly fun question um is there any funny hilarious stories you mind sharing that you've experienced with teammates here in denver so far whether it's off the field on the field locker room at you know at a restaurant or just something that kind of makes you laugh every time you think about it i mean, I think. I mean every every moment with garrett bulls is pretty funny i mean uh, i would say like one of the one of the funnier moments was uh after one of our games, like it, it must have been our first away game because it was like my first time ever flying on the team plane. Like um, back to the and, and Bulls has like a boombox on his on his uh, shoulder. <laughs> like everyone's like asleep on the plane and boombox and uh, Bulls has like his boombox rolling around. He's like bringing people drinks. Like hey, what do you want? Like you want you want this? You want that? Like <laughs> it was hilarious. So that was definitely one of the moments I'd say I remember uh, for sure. That's crazy. That's what, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, uh, any last questions uh, for Justin today, Jordan? Uh, I think I pretty much got everything. Uh, other than the fact that you know, I definitely want to play you in Madden, man. I definitely yeah, do. Yeah, for sure. I uh, I think my my. Do you have PS Five? I got Xbox. Uh, I got PS Five. No, but um, right. but the thing is, my my brother has a PS Five that I can use. I can use okay, his. Yeah, yeah. So I, was gonna say, I was gonna give you guys my gamer tag, but all right. Yeah, for sure, man. We'll get that uh, hooked up for you guys. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for uh, taking your time out of your day to come. I know you're a busy guy. The NFL life is a busy life. So um, thank you so much. You know, good luck in your training and all of that. Um, I'm hoping the best for you in 2023 and on, you know, onward. I'm hoping the most healthy, you know, productive season for you and the entire lot, you know, linebacker room defense and the entire team as well. Um, wishing the best for you guys and hoping for a very successful season um, from not only the team, but uh, you individually yourself. Yeah, I appreciate you guys for having me on, man. Really nice to meet you guys. And we'll definitely uh, we'll definitely get some Madden in for sure. For <laughs> yeah. sure. All right, guys. All right, man. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of the Broncos Avenue Podcast. Make sure if you guys are listening on YouTube, hit the like button, subscribe. If you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, make sure to follow over there and have notifications on so you don't miss any of these episodes. Um, if you're if you're listening over there as well, make sure you leave a five star rating. That stuff helps us out greatly. Um, also, um, you know. Make sure you guys, uh, like I said, have notifications on everywhere. Subscribe to the YouTube um, so you don't miss any of these uh, episodes with Broncos players, insiders, writers, journalists, everything. Um, and, you know, it, like I mentioned earlier, it's going to be a very, very busy offseason. We're going to have all the, you know, updates and content and you know, all the free agency coverage right here on the podcast for you guys. Uh, make sure you guys are followed on Instagram and Twitter at Broncos Avenue and followed uh, Jordan on JMX Sports on Instagram and TikTok as well. Um, have all you guys is uh, NFL coverage and Broncos coverage over there. Yep. Um, without further ado, hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. It's your host, Amir, with my yeah. coach, Jordan, and today's guest, and Justin Cernod. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Till the next one. Peace. Peace.